Assalamu alaikum and good day to everyone. This is Sir Abil Ahmed from Abil School of Accountancy. Uh, I really welcome all of you in my taxation paper. And we are starting Finance Act 2023. And I'm really excited in this Finance Act 2023 as usual, alhamdulillah. Uh, number one thing which I really want to tell you, this Finance Act 2023 is applicable on how many attempts. Then we'll be discussing the paper pattern. Then I'll be discussing what exactly Avilu School of Accountancy uh, offers you in taxation paper. And to be very honest, I strongly believe that uh, passing this taxation paper is very easy. Very, very easy. Uh, why it is easy to pass, I'll discuss that also inshallah. And I'll discuss, uh, I'll also disclose my uh, lifetime highest marks in taxation, how much one of my students she took. Let us see, Finance Act 2003, it is applicable on four consecutive attempts. The first one is June 2024. The second is September 2024. December 24 and the March 25. Wow. March 25. These are the four consecutive attempts on which Finance Act 2023 is applicable. Okay. Now, if I quickly tell you the paper pattern, then we have section A, 30 marks, section B, 30 marks, section C, 40 marks. The computer, mainly your Excel, little bit Excel is skill and the typing speed is required for section C, which is of 40 marks. Uh, but if you have no experience of solving the question on, let's say, Excel spreadsheet before this taxation, you should not be worried about that. That is purely our responsibility to teach you in such a way that you should be having a perfection on solving the question on Excel and even we'll be doing number of question on CV platform as well to give you the simulation. Uh, so to give you the environment which you are going to exactly face in your exam, okay? So paper pattern section A, B, C, A 30 marks, B 30 marks and C 40 marks. Section A we have 15, OTQ, section B three questions, section C we have three questions. Let me give you the detail of the paper pattern. Section A, 15 objective test question. One is having two marks altogether 30. It could be from any area of the syllabus. It means you cannot leave any area of the syllabus because it is from any area of the syllabus. Section B, three questions, 10 marks each. Again, any area of the syllabus altogether 30 marks. Now listen, in section B actually what happens, you will be having a little scenario on that little scenario, examiner is going to ask five multiple choice questions. Each will have two marks. One scenario, five multiple choice questions on that particular scenario. So it means again, section B is on, you know, will give you the multiple choice options. So section A and B, they don't need any skill of your Excel or MS Word, but the main skill of Excel, which is required and which is very easy. Uh, just you need to know how to use the formula of the sum, the option of the drag, plus and minus. You will learn all these things, don't worry at all. Section C, we have one question, 10 marks. Again, it's any area of the syllabus. Then we have two, 15 marks each question. One question will be on income tax on individuals. And the second is going to be on corporation tax. Time allowed is three hours in 10 minutes. This is all about the paper pattern of taxation. Now, majority of the student, they are also interested to know, sir, what is the uh, proportion of theory and calculation? Interestingly, uh, the portion of, I would say, calculation is far more in this uh, paper than theory. So if I give you the idea, so theory, theory could be ranging between 30 to 35 percent. So most of that time, uh, examiner is inclined towards 30 rather than 35, but this, for the safe side, it could be 35. 
Now the calc. If I talk about calc, obviously if the theory is 30%, then calc is 70. If the theory is 35, then the calculation is going to be 65. And the theory of taxation is extremely easy. All you need is you need to know the rules very well. If you know the rules, it means you know the theory. There's no such theory in taxation that you just memorize and uh, memorize, 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 mug up, mug up, mug it up, and then go and pour it in the exam. It's not like that. It's not like that. All you have to do is you should be able to understand the rules, apply the rules. If you're good in understanding the rules, and applying the rules, then simply you will be able to tackle the theory easily. So you should not be worried about that at all. Now, let's go ahead. Now, what do we have next? Now, what actually the Abilu School of Accountancy offers you in taxation, let me tell you. Number one, I myself, Abil Ahmed, I'm not found of long lectures because that is my own experience. If the lecture goes for even 1.5 to two hours, students, they don't sit in front of the screen and watch those lectures. Normally, what do they do? Then they pause after 30 minutes, 40 minutes, and then they do some work, whatever it is. Then again, they unpause the video. So I come up with a formula. The formula is each lecture will be on average just 45 minutes long, that's it. And it's a very moderate time. 45 minutes is not a very long time. It's not a very short time. So entire taxation paper, entire taxation course will be within 90 lectures. That is our past trend also. Within 90 lectures. And each lecture is just 45 minutes long. Each lecture is just 45 minutes long. So entire taxation paper is just consists of 90 lectures each 45 minutes long if i convert that into time period it will be 67 point i would say 67.5 hours something like that with a rounding of you can say 68 hours so all together uh let me reconfirm yeah, 67.5 hours. If I just do a little bit rounding of it's going to be 68 hours. It includes the entire course tax of the taxation and the practice also. The kit which I strongly recommend and follow that is Kaplan kit, Finance Act 2023. That is a kit which throughout the syllabus we are going to follow. When it comes to the book, there's no need to buy any book. You will get my compiled notes that are my compiled notes. They are just replacement of the study text. Okay. They will be concise, short, and to the point. Next thing, if I just tell you, a number of my students, they took really good marks, uh, but the highest achievement ever from one of my students, her name is Bhaktawar, the way back she took uh, 99 marks. So that's my lifetime achievement uh, in taxation paper. So after that, I didn't get any student to break that 99 uh, marks record. Maybe you are going to match or we never know. You can break it also. Now, <clears throat> let's uh, go towards the slavers. The entire taxation slavers, basically, I divide the entire taxation slavers into six uh, big categories of six heads. Let's see. Actually, the tax in taxation slavers, the first, I'm going to tell you the uh, entire syllabus in a sequence in which we will be studying also, inshallah. Number one is individuals. Actually, taxation for individuals. For example, individual could be earning employment income. How to tax the employment income, we will learn. If there's a possibility, individual is also having a rental income from the properties. How do we tax rental income? We will study that also. If individual is having a pension income, so what are the rules for the pension income to be taxed? What are the rules if the individual is a sole trader? So all these incomes and number of others relating to individuals, you will learn in taxation for individuals. Second is capital gain tax, CGT. CGT first we'll be learning capital gain tax for individuals and later on we'll be learning CGT again, again for the companies. Third is inheritance tax, IST. 
Fourth, value added tax, another name could be sales tax, corporation tax, and then we have self assessment. Obviously, self assessment for individuals and corporations. How do individual they pay tax and what are the rules individual they have to follow? What are the rules for corporation they have to follow? If the company is a large company, how do they pay tax? If company is not a large company, then how uh, this company will be paying the tax? You will learn all these things, inshallah. Don't worry at all. Now, we, will be, we are starting right now from the very first class. I always teach from zero, no matter which paper I'm teaching. Uh, and obviously, this is taxation, though you have not studied this paper uh, before. But I, I'm, a, I'm fond of teaching always from zero. Either I'm teaching professional papers or any paper of the skill level. I normally assume students, they don't carry any previous knowledge. So it's better to assume uh, the student doesn't know anything so that we should be studying from zero. Let me the tell you first thing, a very basic point, that is tax. If somebody is asking you a question, what is a tax? Actually, tax is a source of revenue for the government. If the tax is a source of revenue for the government, then the question arises why government uh, collects tax from the people, from the corporations. There's a reason. Actually, tax is the source of revenue for the government and the government they collects the tax from individuals they are wealthy, from corporations they are earning, so that Government can spend money, <clears throat> obviously, for the welfare of the entire country, for the welfare of the poor people. And if government is start the spending, then automatically job opportunities will create. And when people will have jobs, people will have good spending power, people will have a good disposable income, then automatically economies, they come out of the recession. So the taxation is a source of revenue for the government. Okay, next point. We are starting our taxation syllabus from the individuals, but right now I'm not starting any topic. I'm just giving you a little bit idea. The first question is, how does an individual pay tax in UK? How does an individual pay tax in UK? The answer is, individuals they pay tax in UK according to tax year. Another name for the tax year is fiscal year. Now, from which date tax year or fiscal year starts and when it ends? Actually, fiscal year starts from 6 April. For example, if if a tax year has started from 6 April 2021, it will end on 5th April 2022. How do we write? It is written like this. If the tax year starts from 6 April 2022, it will end on 5th April 2023. This is how we write. Tax year 22-23, 6 April 2023 till 5th April 2024. It is written like this. And the tax year 23-24 is, for you guys, is extremely important. This is what you will be following in Finance Act 2023. Okay. <clears throat> now what? Now the question is, what are the possible sources of income for the individual? There's a possibility that individual is earning from a non-saving source of income. There's a possibility individual is earning from a saving source of income. And there's a possibility individual is also getting the dividend income. The question is, how do we tax if someone is earning from the non-saving, saving as well as dividend? Number one, possible sources of income for individuals. Possible sources of income.
for individuals. Individual could be earning from non-saving. Saving income and that another possibility is dividend income. Okay. Non-saving. If I give you the examples of non-saving sources of income, for example, employment income is one of the examples of non-saving income. Property income means rental income. Even the pension income falls in non-saving income. If individual is a sole trader and having a trading income. It is it. For example, individual could be a partner in a partnership from getting a share of the profit from the partner. That is also partnership. If he's getting a share of the profit from the partnership firm, and that is also an example of non-saving income. Saving income simply means interest income. Saving income simply means interest income, nothing else. And the dividend income means dividend income. Okay. Now, we, we are going to learn first how to calculate tax if someone is earning from the non-saving source of income. Then there's a possibility individual is having income from saving as well as non-saving, let's say. How do we tax? And third, then we are going to learn if an individual is getting income from non-saving, saving and dividend, all three sources of income, how do we tax? First, we are starting uh, to learn if someone is earning from the non-saving source of income, so how do we calculate tax? But before learning the taxation rules for the non-saving income, the first question which you should have your mind in your mind that, sir, uh, that every individual in UK pays tax, the answer is no. Only those individuals are required to pay tax in UK, they are having earnings more than £12,570, which is called personal allowance. So Finance Act 2023, Personal allowance is 12,570, which means that only those individuals will be, uh, they are required to pay tax if their earning is more than 12,570. And this personal allowance was also in Finance Act 2022, but obviously you are studying Finance Act 2023. So whoever is having earning more than uh, 12,570 will have to pay tax. Now let's see a question. Assuming. Someone is having employment income of, let's say, 80,000. Someone is having an employment income of 80,000. And you are required to just calculate income tax liability. Calculate Okay, how do we solve this? Simply take this employment income deduct the personal allowance. One two five seven zero. So you are having taxable income. The income which is over and above the personal allowance that is actually taxable. So eighty thousand minus twelve thousand five seventy. I'm getting sixty seven thousand four thirty. Uh, now the question arises: How do we apply tax rates on this sixty seven thousand four thirty? Now listen. How do we apply tax rates on non-saving income? Let me tell you. Non-saving? There's basic rate band. Basic rate band 
starts from one pound and still 37,700 and the applicable tax rate is 20%. So if the income which falls in basic rate band, then applicable tax rate is 20%. Another thing is, first you have to use the basic rate band. Let's say you have utilized the basic rate band, then the higher rate band comes. Higher rate band starts from 37,701, goes till 125,140. Applicable tax rate is 40%. If someone is even having income more than 125,140, then additional rate. Additional rate starts from 125,141 plus, then there's no limit. Applicable tax rate is 45%. These bands and the tax rates would be given to you in exam. So you should not be worried about these limits and the tax rates. Normally, when you'll be uh, watching three, four more lectures, automatically you will uh, get to remember these uh, bands and rates. But just I want to tell you one thing. Uh, these rates will would be given to you in exam as well. Okay, now let's apply tax rates. Taxable income is 67,000. Four thirty. You cannot directly apply 40%. First, you have to utilize, first you have to consume basic rate band. After that, you will go for higher rate band. So basic rate band. Entire income is non-semi. We know that 37,700 and the applicable rate is 20%. I'll get 7540. So simply, you cannot apply directly higher rate. First, you have to consume, utilize basic rate band and the income which is over and above the basic rate band that falls in higher rate band. So the taxable income is 67,430. Out of the 67,430, you have already taxed 37,700. So from 67,430, if I deduct 37,700, I'm getting 29,730. So logically 29,730 actually falls in higher rate band, where applicable tax rate is 40%. 29,730 into 40%. I'm getting 11,892. Simply add both of them. You will get income tax liability. That is 19,432. Let's see one more question. Let's say someone is having employment income of 60,000 and you need to calculate income tax liability. I really want you to do one thing. Pause the video, attempt the question, and then you can always unpause the video. So three step, pause, attempt, unpause. Pause, attempt, unpause. So employment income, we know that it's a non-saving income. This individual is not required to pay tax on entire 60. Personal allowance 12,570 will be deducted. Let's see how much taxable income we are getting. So 60,000 minus 12,570, I'm getting 47,430. Let's see what tax we are having, income tax. Obviously, first basic rate band will be utilized, 37,700 applicable tax rate is 20%, I'll get 7540. Now stop. You have utilized, you have consumed basic rate band. The taxable income is 47,430, but out of this 47,430, you have already taxed 37,700. So let me deduct. 37,700 from 47,430, I'm getting 9730. Logically, this 9730 actually falls in higher rate band, where applicable tax rate is 40%. 3,892. Here comes your income tax liability.
11,432. So let me give you a little homework you can say. Let's say property income means simply rental income and rental income is another example of uh, non-saving income. Let's say someone is having a rental income of 90,000. I just want you to calculate income tax liability, but I really want every one of you to calculate this income tax liability. And if you're watching this lecture on the YouTube, you can share your answer on the YouTube. Otherwise do calculate the income tax liability and then you can match your answer with my answer. That's a little bit homework. Okay, during the, just a little bit about the slavers and then we are com completing this lecture. Uh, during the lecture, you will be, during the entire taxation course of Finance Act 2023, you will be getting assignment also. And there will be a final mock as well. Now, if any one of you, obviously, who is interested to get enrolled yourself in taxation paper in uh, Abil School of Accountancy, I just want to give you the WhatsApp number of my admin. If you are an international student, then WhatsApp number for you is 0092 triple three three triple six two one four if you are within pakistan then whatsapp number for you is zero triple three three triple six two one four that is a bill school of accountancy admin number okay so simply you can contact the admin. They will guide you if you need my assistant, assistant, assistance in any area of your uh, ACC study. I'll be available, inshallah. You can contact me as well. Uh, you can ask the admin. They will connect you with me. So thank you very much and hope to see you all in my next lecture. And I always say one thing to my students. What is that? Actually, I don't want to say I don't want to, I don't want to say have a nice day. Why? Because... I believe the life is still itself very short. That is why from bottom, from the bottom of my heart, I just want to say one thing to all of my students that are enrolled with me and those they are they are watching this lecture on the YouTube. Have a nice life rather than just having a nice day. So have a nice life. Thank you very much.